Sisters. I say we make them come out here and fight us up front like they're not a bunch of sissies. <laughs> Your sense of strategy is amazing. Are you talking to me, Run Boy? Let's go. <laughs> Stupid dwarf. The four same beasts are a quartet of villains which can be found in the first part of Yu Yu Hakusho, coming before Degoro and Tarakane, the introduction for many to the series, or the demons with Emma's castle. For the sake of this video, I'm just going to be referring to it as the Maze Castle arc in this video is going to serve as almost an arc analysis alongside a character analysis since I'm covering four characters simultaneously. I plan on making other videos about part 1 as I think it's criminally underrated. If you're interested in that, I'd recommend checking out my Botan video. Also, as I am the only YouTube channel posting regular Yu Yu Hakusho content in 2023, be sure to like and subscribe, as well as let me know what you'd like me to talk about in the comments below. Anyway, let's take a look at the demons that made up the Four Saint Beast. I'm going to go ahead and give a little background on the four before we dive deeper into each individual character and their respective battles with the main cast. The Four Saint Beast are the main antagonists during the main castle arc. They're each modeled after one of the four animals of the Chinese-Japanese cardinal points. They're the more powerful rulers of Demon City, where high-level D-class aberrations reside. D-class is very, very weak in the grand scheme of the series, but at this point in time, Yusuke and others were fighting people that were like tree-level at best. They live within the Maze Castle to limit their power outside the city. Despite this, they have complete control over the city's inhabitants, using them as messengers and for maidens. Their followers are actually the ones who gave them the Saint moniker. Each member has their own room, which sort of acts as their domain and the demons escalate in power as you continue through the castle. This is really the first time Kuobara, Kuroma, Hiei, and Yusuke are already working together. Though Hiei isn't entirely on board, as he's pretty much willing to let the others die as they are caught in a trap. The moments leading up to the fights and in between dialogue is really enjoyable and great for becoming familiar with Kuroma and Hiei. We'll get into that a little more as the video goes on, but this arc helped how fans thought of Kuroma and Hiei so much. Anyway, the first Saint Beast they run into is Gimbu. Gimbu the Stone Beast or the Black Tortoise. Gimbu is the weakest among the four Saint Beasts. His body is entirely composed of stone, earthing him near destructibility. Rather than just be a bit of a brute, he does have the interesting ability to merge with rocks and launch attacks from various angles. Unfortunately for him, like many others, his opponent ended up being Kurama. This fight is probably the first time you see how great Kurama really is. He is very calm and analyzes Gimbu before realizing that he must have a reason that allows him to manipulate parts of his body in the way he does. Kurama always has interesting fights and I like the wide array of tests he has to go up against throughout the series. This is a great start to that trend and with ease he defeats Gimbu. It also led to one of the most popular memes of Yu Yu Hakusho and the scene that made me dive laughing as a kid. Yes, I'm sure of it. Now you're laughing at nothing. Wait, how, how did you get on the ceiling? Uh, uh, what's wrong? <laughs> I've heard of brass balls before, but come on! <laughs> yeah, I'd like to see him use a toilet! Unfortunately, there isn't too much to say about Gimbu, but he is the first beast and simply helps to establish Kuroma, as well as start the trend of Kuroma being the best character in the entire series. Byakko the White Tiger is the second of the four same beasts. He's, like the name, a large tiger-like demon with an arrogant demeanor. Despite obviously not being the strongest of the four, he considers himself the dominant among the group. Byakko goes against Kuwabara of all people, which is fortunate for Kuwabara if anything as the two following White Tiger would have destroyed him in a second. Rather than what you'd expect, Byakko actually has a variety of techniques, unleashing powerful energy waves and being able to throw his claws. He can also transform his strands of hair into creatures that go after his opponent, as well as absorb energy. So take all that and this fight also takes place above a literal lava pit. While watching this for the first time, I was lost as to why all this was happening to Kuobara of all people. Though, if you know Kuobara, the one thing that he has is that he always gets back up, 
After being beaten badly by Yusuke, he still continues. Every match throughout the Dark Tournament, he is severely injured or starting off at some ridiculous disadvantage. Kuobar's large amount of spirit and energy ends up being his saving grace. Byakyo has a limited capacity to absorb energy, leaving him overwhelmed as he goes over then. So with Kuobar's ability, he's able to defeat him by knocking him into a lava pit. He actually reappears. Following this as the group meets the third demon, Seryu the Blue Dragon. I honestly never thought much about it, but everything Tagashi does in the Maze Castle has a larger reason to it. You can tell even early on he had these characters fleshed out as a lot of patterns would be repeated throughout the series, such as the Briar mentioned Kurama vs. Unorthodox opponent thing. So Byakko survives the lava pit when he was in a situation where you thought there was no way he could survive somewhere to Elder Tagoro's defeat in the Dark Tournament. Rather than he or anyone else killing him, Seryu introduces himself by killing Byakko immediately, like younger Tagoro, killing Elder Tagoro in the Dark Tournament. Maze Castle really allowed Tagashi to explore these things and write the rest of Yu Yu Hakusho to be as good as it is. As a result, this triggers something within Hiei, him dropping his callous persona for a second and the ruthless murder of his comrade bothering him. Hiei has a totally different aura to him, and from the cute and funny moments earlier to this, this character is totally different than his first appearance as a throwaway villain. Seryu is assumed to be the second in command of the four same beast and is terrifying compared to the prior two. With his ability to control temperature and make surroundings reach sub zero temperature, his punches can shatter any opponent. EA, in a similar fashion to his execution of Zero, quickly executes Seryu. EA's fighting style is honestly really interesting. I'd recommend you go check out my video on him if you want to explore it more. That video is probably my best one and I really dive into the philosophy and reasoning behind his swift choices. He's highly intelligent, expressing that if he hadn't killed him quickly, his power would have only grew and would have threatened the lives of Yusuke and Gang. So while Byako dying was the reason for him to be angry, most of EA's killing being neutral or to achieve his ultimate goal relating to his family. He didn't need one, but he was also already looking for a reason to protect Kurama, Yusuke, and Kuwabara. When someone he actually cares about is threatened, he goes to extreme lengths, slicing Seryu 16 times faster than the blink of an eye. The final beast is Suzaku, the leader. He's much more aesthetically softer and human looking compared to his allies. On their way to the final tower, Hiei, Kurama, and Kuwabara are cut off by an army of plant demons that protect it. Yusuke manages to slip through and becomes the default opponent for him. Yusuke can't catch a break from his loved ones being threatened by his opponents. This being the most dramatic yet, with Suzaku capturing Keiko in order to torment him during their battle. This of course in turn amps Yusuke, but the gap in power is immense between the two. He's able to unleash a powerful storm as well as create clones of himself in order to hold Yusuke while simultaneously watching Keiko and Botan. While he manages to damage him in a manner similar to Xylopro from Bleach, he absorbs his clones and regenerates his energy. Keiko's role in the series early on is much more meaningful. I'll eventually make a video on her and Kuobara's sister, as I did with Botan. Anyway, her fear drives the actions into an explosion that destroys his clones, leading to his eventual defeat in his dying moments, acknowledging the strength of Yusuke and Keiko's bond. Suzaku was by far the strongest of the four and pushed Yusuke to a limit only really since Wei would push him to later on, resulting in his death only to be prevented by Kuwabara sharing his energy with him in order to save his life. The first adventure for the four is fantastic and a great way for Tagashi to flesh out and set the foundation for both Kurama and Hiei. You really see how much Kuwabara cares for Yusuke and Hiei as well when the three see his body left alone. They're all here for Keiko as damsel in distress, yes, but it's not nothing. And like other moments during part 1, such as the spirit egg situation, I think she demonstrates a lot of value as a character. I think that the power of the four saint beasts are pretty creative, but a little all over the place. It's fun and enjoyable though, which is why so many people have love for this part of the anime. It also plays a large part in what makes the opening so iconic. The maze castle arc is Yu Yu Hakusho through and through and brings the series together for what would be two of the greatest arcs in history following. 
I hope you enjoyed the video and I'd love to know what you think of the Maze Castle arc as well as the Four Saint Beasts. Which fight is your favorite of the four? Be sure to like and subscribe and I have more Yu Yu Hakusho content on the way, so I'll see you in the next video.